Hello guys and thank you for listening or watching another episode of Live Free Podcast where I talk about living that life of freedom, rest, and expansion in Christ Jesus. I'm so grateful to be back. I'm grateful for the word of the Lord that he has given me today. It is a blessed word. This is a word of exhortation. It's a word of comfort. It's a word of uh, confirmation for many of people. But I'm here today <clears throat> to speak on possessing your inheritance. We're going to be talking about possessing your inheritance. You know, I'm reminded of the scriptures of the or the numbers that God uh, gives me on a regular basis. I always see the 111 or 1111 or 818. And we know the scriptures, uh, you know, for me, 1111 talks about crossing over. It talks about the Jordan. It talks about uh, the land that you're about to possess, you know, and the type of land that it is and that God has for us. So today, the word that keeps coming alive in my spirit and that God has given me for the body of Christ today is possessing your inheritance. See, this 2024, I do truly believe that we are in a season of abundance, a season of overflow, a season of breakthrough and release for God's people. I truly believe that a lot of promises and a lot of things that we have been praying for, we're not just talking about monetary things, but we're talking about souls. We're talking about people in your family that you have prayed for, your children, your nieces, your aunts, your uncles, your cousins, your siblings, your parents, your grandparents, that you're about to see the manifestation of the glory of God in your life, the inheritance that has been stolen from us, the inheritance that has been uh, destroyed the inheritance that has been prostituted by the enemy, the inheritance of God. You know, when you are a believer and you come to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have your daddy's DNA. You have Abba Father's DNA, and you are an in, you you are an inheritance, and you will inherit the earth. The Bible says, "Blessed are the meek." for they shall inherit the earth. So I wanna start off today by talking about the inheritance, but I want to start off with Deuteronomy 15 verses um, one through six, but I'm gonna just uh, talk about the first verse, which is, it says, at the end of every seven years, you shall grant a release of debts. So, there is a release that is coming upon the people of God, a release of debts, a release of inheritance, a release of freedom, a release of souls that you have been praying for, a release of businesses, a release of land that God has promised you, a release of, of the creativity that God has in, imparted into you that has not come to fruition yet. The vision that you have written, it will be made plain and you have made it plain on tablets, but God is saying you're getting ready to possess the gates of your enemy. You're getting ready to possess those things that have been still killed or destroyed, not only just for you, but what has been destroyed and stolen from your bloodline. So we're going to be talking about the inheritance today. And let's first start off with the definition of the word inheritance so we can kind of get the full scope of what the holy spirit is saying so what does the word inheritance mean and it's um just in the general term describing it, it it's basically the assets that are passed down to individual after someone dies and i'm going to say it again it is the assets that are passed down to individuals when someone dies and, and so we look at this from a theological standpoint, from a biblical standpoint, in that sense, it is it means to inherit, it means to, re to receive an irrevocable gift with an emphasis on special relationship between the benefactor and the recipients. I'm going to say that again. In the theological sense, in the biblical sense, it means to inherit. It means to receive an irrevocable, irrevocable gift with an emphasis on special relationship between the benefactor and the recipients. Okay, so 
our inheritance that God talks about in the kingdom of God, according to Ephesians 1 and 4, um, 1 through 4, it says, our inheritance in Christ includes being chosen in Christ before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless, uh, predestined to be adopted at, as his sons and daughters through Jesus Christ, redeemed through Christ's blood for the forgiveness of sins. So we see this when we are a uh, uh, ambassador, when we are citizens in the kingdom of God, when we are born again believers and we are blood bought, we are grafted in, we have an inheritance that God has for us. That inheritance looks like many different things, right? But it is an irrevocable gift that you are grafted in. You know what that means? That means you don't have to work for it to get it. That means that you don't have to sell your soul to get it. That means that you don't have to uh, be your unauthentic self to get it. That means that it is an irrevocable gift that you are grafted in. You are accepted in the arms of the beloved. You are royalty. The Bible says you are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy people, a peculiar people that God has called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. And part of that inheritance is only found in Christ Jesus. All of it is only found in Christ Jesus. So this is not something that you have to pay for. This is not something that you have to key, key, key and laugh with people to get. This is not something that you have to uh, manipulate or even to um, sell your body or to sell your mind or to sell yourself to get it. This is an inheritance. And if we look at this from a just a natural standpoint in the earth, we see royalty when we look at England, when we look at the queen, when we look at the king in England. The kids do, don't have to do anything to be grafted in, to, to be royalty, to, to be an heir of the promise, right? So God has said that we are heirs according to the promise. We're heirs of Abraham. We're seeds of Abraham. And we know that that is royalty through the blood of Jesus. Jesus Christ, Jesus himself is royalty. So we know that we have his DNA. We know that our DNA automatically qualifies us. This is not something that we will have to qualify for. This is something that means because, because you are a child of the most high God of El Elyon, that you are engrafted in. And God wants to talk about that inheritance today. We're going to talk about that. Um, not only the inheritance in her earth, as the Bible talks about, you know, but we are also heirs and inheritance of the kingdom of God. That means that we are a part of the kingdom. And that means that like American Express, we have benefits. There's benefits to being connected and being joint heirs with Jesus Christ. There is a benefit that you have that people that don't know Christ do not have. So you have royal blood flowing through your vein. You have the DNA of your daddy in your vein, which means that everything that he has is yours. That means that everything that he uh, promises in his word, it is yours. All of the promises of God are yes and amen. So healing is yours, right? We don't have to ask God, can we be healed? We know that healing is a byproduct of being a born again believer, that by the stripes of Jesus that we are healed. So the inheritance is not only a supernatural thing, but it's also an earthly thing. So we see that um, we walk in the inheritance in the earth but the, because the Bible says, blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth. So that is a heavenly thing and it's an earthly thing and it's for every born again believer. Um, and then we also see um, in Proverbs 13 and 22, where it says, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, but the wealth of the wicked is laid up or stored up for the just or the righteous. We know that we are are joint heirs because of the blood of Yeshua. Everything is wrapped up in Jesus. Everything points back to Yeshua. Everything points back to the promises of God. We don't have to ask God. We know that his promises are yes and amen. The question is, do we know how to access what is already ours? Because see, there's a lot of angels that have, that have not been working because we don't know how to access 
the angels. We don't know how to partner with the angelic. There's a lot of things in the word of God that, that tells us about these promises. But as believers, if we don't elevate our thinking and let the Holy Spirit renew our mind and, and, and operate from a, a glory level, we will never begin or to understand how to access what God has already said yes to. A lot of times we go to God and we ask for things that are just a part of our DNA. It's a part of our inheritance to be blessed, to be healed, to be whole. It's a part of our inheritance not to walk around downtrodden or to be confused or deceived by the enemy. It's a part of your inheritance to walk and move in him and have your being. But if your mind has not been renewed or restored, uh, the Bible says that we are renewed. We go from glory to glory and we have to let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. That means you have to do something. You have to let it. You have to forget everything you know and begin to allow the Holy Spirit to renew your mind and restore your soul. A lot of the mind situations and the, the elevating of the mind and thinking and having the mind of Christ is directly tied into your soul, which is your mind, your will, your emotions. It's tied into traumas. It's tied into pains of the past. You know, the enemy loves nothing more than to keep you looking back because it's impossible to go forward while you're still looking back. There are demons that are called demons of the past that keeps you in remembrance of horrible things. Have you ever noticed the bad things are easier to remember. The bad things are easier to recite. The traumas of your soul, the things that happened when you were a child or the things that happened in your young adulthood or teenager or whenever it happened, those things are fresh, like fresh wounds because we have not elevated our mind and we have not put on the mind of Christ. We have not said what the God's word says about us. We continuously allow the enemy in our ear repeating all the horrible things someone has ever done to you, repeating all the horrible relationships. You can't move on from one relationship because you're still reminded of an old relationship. I'm here to tell you that is by design and you have to begin to cast down according to you know Corinthians 10 and 4. It says cast down vain imaginations and high things that exalt itself against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive into the obedience of Christ. Now I heard something from a pastor and I thought it was amazing the way he said it. And this is what he said. He said, demons have to be cast out, but strongholds have to be cast down. So there's two different things happening here. We have to cast down those vain imaginations, but demons have to be cast out. That's a totally different thing. So when we have all of those strongholds, those altars, those monuments, all of the horrible things the enemy like to keep us in remembrance of, we need to refute that and to mitigate that with the word of God. We need, and I have to do it on the daily. We have to do it when we hear negative thoughts about people, when we hear negative thoughts about ourselves, when we hear negative thoughts about our jobs, about our businesses, and when we we get bad news we need to go ahead and start speaking the good news the gospel over our minds and we need to cast down every vain imagination everything that exalt itself against the knowledge of God the Bible says in Philippians 4 and 8 whatever things are pure whatever things are lovely whatever things are of a good uh, a virtue if there be anything praiseworthy to think on those things and the peace of God that God will guard our heart and mind in Christ Jesus right so Proverbs 13 and 22 tells us uh, that a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, right? And then Ephesians 1.11 is also says, Ephesians 1.11, which we see the number 111 a lot of times. And it says, in him, we also have obtained an inheritance, right? We, it says, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. And then we look at here um, and we see that there is no scripture in the word of God that requires you to give money concerning receiving an inheritance. An inheritance is simply like this. You are born into royalty, greatness, inheritance, not because you deserve it, but because it's a part of being in the kingdom of God, of being a citizen of the kingdom of God, of who you are in Christ Jesus. It's all about Jesus. So it's not about you, lest any man should boast. So we know that 
It's not anything that we can pay for. Remember what uh, Peter told the man? He said he tried to offer Peter money uh, to receive the gift, the spiritual gifts. And Peter says, may your money burn up with you to think that you can buy the, to think that the gift of God can be bought. These things cannot be bought. This is an inheritance. God is saying in 2024, we're going to be walking into uh, the beginning the beginning, let me say this, it's going to be the beginning of inheritance that was lost, stolen uh, from your ancestors, from your parents and grandparents and everybody that never received. This is a season where God is raising up a remnant, remnant to receive the blessing, the inheritance that he has promised generations. We will see. And this is not just a one-time event. I really strongly feel by the Holy Spirit. I really believe that it's the beginning of something beautiful and wonderful that God has for his people. And so I heard the phrase, I heard this phrase at uh, one, on 118, 2024, uh, about six o'clock in the morning. I heard the phrase, a uh, happy chaotic. And I was like, a happy chaotic. It just seems so like contradictory, right? A happy chaotic. And I, and I wrote down, I said, as this speaks to the condition of the workplace and also the season of the Red Sea crossing, right? We are walking into. This is a season of walking on dry land to cross over to our next season of victory, says God. This is what God had me to write down. So he said, it's going to be happy times and a chaotic times. So there's going to be Kairos moments for God's people, for his remnant, for those that have not a compromise, right? So we see this is a season of walking on dry land to cross over to our next season of victory. God says, God will blow on, listen to this. God says he will blow on, he will blow an east wind to your enemies. They will sink like lead in the mighty waters. According to Exodus 15 and 10, this is what he's saying. The redeemed will be guided and the strength of the Lord into his holy habitation. He said, sorrow will take hold of your enemies until the people that are purchased with the blood of Jesus have safely and swiftly passed over. So this is a time and this is a season where God is saying that the redeemed will be guided in the strength of the Lord into his holy habitation. And he says, sorrow will take hold of your enemies until the people that are purchased with the blood of the lamb. So in other words, it's a Red Sea crossing moment. You will be passing on dry ground. God will allow you to pass over. There are storms coming, but God says it's going to be a happy chaotic Chaotic for those that don't know him and happy for the ones that delight in him and that hold him high and that doesn't look to idols or sacrifice their souls for a penny roll. So God will bring us in, 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 this is what he's saying, he will bring us in and plant us in the mountain of our inheritance and the place of his dwelling, the sanctuary which we have been established by the hand of the Lord, according to Exodus 15 and 17. I'm going to say that again. He says, he will bring us in and plant us in the mountain of our inheritance and the place of his dwelling, the sanctuary, which we have been established by the hand of the Lord, according to Exodus 15 and 17. It's a prescribed place of worship that is coming after the crossing over. There's going to be a prescribed place of worship that you're going to build for the Lord in this season that is coming. And so God is saying, um, that he is going to allow us to cross over on dry land. And while everything seemed like it's going crazy and chaotic for the world, we will live in a happy place. We will live in a peaceful rest, no matter what's going on in the world, because we are in him, we are overcomers. The Bible says in the world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. That means that if you are in Christ and you are hidden in him, that you still are, are an overcomer, no matter what come or may or what chaos is going on in the world. So I'm going to read Deuteronomy 12, 4 and 5. And it says, you shall not worship the Lord your God with such things, but you shall seek the place where the Lord your God chooses out of all your tribes to put his name for his dwelling place. And there you should uh, go. So then I skip down to Deuteronomy 10, um, 12 
and verse 10 and it says when you cross over to the Jordan and dwell in the land it's all God is bringing us into a place of flowing of milk and honey you're walking into Goshen this is going to be your Goshen moment God is going to move on behalf of his people. He is opening up doors that no man can shut, that generations that have not seen, that people cannot stop. The only person can stop it is you. So God says, go forth with victory. Go forth in the power of his strength. It's not by your might or power, but it is by his spirit. It's not because we deserve anything, but because he's everything, because he loves us, because we are his children, because this is a byproduct of being a citizen of the kingdom of God. This is your inheritance. So the Bible says in verse 13 in Deuteronomy 12, it says in verse 13, it says, take heed to yourself that you do not offer your burnt offerings and every place that you see. That means that just because it says it's a church, it's a ministry, or God said, don't, don't do it unless God has instructed you to do it. Only go and make that monument and that um, altar to God where he tells you. Only sacrifice where God tells you. Only go where he tells you. I don't care who else is doing it. Your friends, your cousins, your relatives, your neighbors, your children. I don't care who else is doing it. You better know that you heard God for yourself. And I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this, guys. You better know that every prophetic word is not for you. It's so many prophetic words that came 2022, 2023, that had it not been for God's grace and the Holy Spirit's leading, I would have missed God. Because I'm telling you right now, I am walking something out that I didn't think I was going to walk out, right? But it is the will of God. And is and God still got me and he's still taking care of me. He's still amazing. But had I listened to other prophetic words, not to say that they're not speaking what thus said the Lord. It's just that every word is not for you. So unless you have a personal relationship with God, you will have taken someone else's prophetic word and ran with it and been on the wrong track. You better be careful and you better be seeking God for your own self. Even though words may come, you better know it's a word for you. And I'm just going to say that that's a word of wisdom to someone that's going to help somebody because a lot of times we get frustrated because things don't look like the way that we thought they should look because we're listening to someone else's prophetic word <laughs> and it's not for us. It's for someone else. So just know that when a word comes forth, Pray about it, seek God about it, and, and just make sure that you're on track with the Holy Spirit with his plan for your life and not the life of everybody else. I'm going to read Psalm 16 and I'm going to close out. Psalm 16 verses 5 through 6, it says, O Lord, you are the portion of my inheritance and my cup you maintain my lot. The lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. Yes, I have a good in." inheritance. God has a good thing. The Bible says in Jeremiah 29 11, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Everything that God has for you is good. It may not go the way you think it's going to go. It may not play out the way you think it's going to play out. But trust me when I, when I say that if you are in Christ and you're putting him first and you're honoring and respecting and revering him, all things work together for the good of us that love the Lord. Even when we get off track, God has already provided a way of escape to put you back where you belong because he's good like that. Has nothing to, to do with our goodness, with our behavior, but it has everything to do with the goodness of God. The Bible says it is the goodness of God that leads people to repentance, not fear. It's the goodness of God. That means when you recognize how great and wonderful and mighty he is and how merciful he is and how many chances that he has given you, you start to just thank God and repent. That's what the goodness of God is. You're just remembering the goodness of God when he take you back down memory lane and he allow you to see where, the, where your life could have been taken or he allow you to see where you could have been hoodwinked, where you could have been manipulated, but he held you close. And when you think about the goodness of God, it brings tears to your eyes. It fills you with joy. It puts you in a different place and it makes you want to repent. It makes you, it's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. Not the, the other things that we think or the things that, you know, the things that we do, but it's the goodness of God. So 
that is all I have for today, guys. And I just wanted to say that this is a 2024, the year of the beginning. And I truly believe that it's going to cross over into 2025 and beyond. And I believe that as we come into the wealth transfer, it's going to be a series of events. I, I truly believe that. You're going to have the, the first portion, and then you're going to have the second portion. And I truly believe that it's a process. So be careful that you don't run ahead of God in, these, in this season and that you stay in sync and, and, and step with the Holy Spirit because there's going to be seasons to buy land and property. Just because the money is in your hand, that doesn't mean that it's time for you to buy it. I remember somebody saying on YouTube, when they dump, we loot. But when they dump, it's when the economy is going to crash. So the money may come before the actual land or property. So just be in prayer about that because I truly believe that these things are going to come and God wants us to 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 plunder when it's pennies on the dollar not when you pray and paying full price that's just wisdom that's just what i feel in my spirit so again that's all i have for today thank you so much for watching and tuning in and until the next time i will see you in the next video like this video if this has been a blessing to you please share it and so it can get into the al algorithm and until the next time guys i am praying for you i love you and i will see you in the next video bye loves